So some of you may have seen this video before I took it down. What you're about to watch is a re-upload uh, with some very, very important changes. In the interest of transparency, I took the original video down because a, a commenter pointed out to me that I myself was potentially violating the license terms of certain virtual instruments that I have access to. And after doing some research, I realized that this commenter was 100% correct. So I'm course correcting to avoid any infringement or violation on my part. But during this process, I discovered something kind of concerning about the implications of this whole copyright discussion. So we'll get to that sort of like towards the end. For now, I'm just going to I'm just going to play the video as it was with some minor changes and annotations um, to sort of clarify certain things. Before we get started, I want to clear up some things that may have been incorrect or misleading in my previous video. If you didn't see the previous video, no problem. This will be informative nonetheless. First, to clarify the term MIDI. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's not just a file that contains note data, but a broad standard that allows digital instruments and computers to share information back and forth between one another. The reason that it's important to know this is because the term MIDI is often used to refer to any and all sequenced music, but that's not quite correct. That brings me to my next point about the term sound font. Sound font is often used to describe any instrument bank, especially when said instrument bank comes from a video game. However, the term sound font is very specific and is in fact a brand name. While it has taken on a commonly understood meaning of sounds from a video game, the format itself doesn't actually have very much to do with video games, outside of being the chosen format for folks who rip instrument samples from video games and then turn them into usable instruments. That is to say, Ocarina of Time itself did not use a sound font. Rather, a sound font was made using the instrument samples found in the game data of Ocarina of Time. I hope that clears that up. As I mentioned in my previous video, many classic game consoles have their own formats that are more or less similar to MIDI and sound font, but the formats that I listed were not exactly correct. Formats like SPC, PSF, PSF2, while all more or less similar to the MIDI and sound font combo, are not the original proprietary formats of their respective systems. Rather, they are formats created by fans for playback on the PC. The proper formats of these platforms are a bit more complex. The SNES, for example, didn't have a format so much as just raw code that told the processor what to play. The music was quite literally programmed. This is more or less what's happening with a tracker. The PlayStation 1 used formats like Akao, Vab, and some others. These were a bit more similar to what you might imagine from MIDI and SoundFun. Likewise with PS2's formats. I hope that clears that up. Now for today's big question. Are video game sound fonts legal? Disclaimer, I am not a lawyer or a legal professional, and this is not legal advice. Well, we have a few things to cover. Sound fonts extracted from video games fall into what you'd call a legal gray area, and there are several reasons why. Number one, samples. The instrument samples found in sequenced video game music almost universally come from romplers like the Roland JV-1080, the Korg Triton, the Emu Proteus 2000, and more, or from sample CDs. All of the sounds within those things are copyright protected. But wait, what about number two, transformative use? In video games, a sound may originate from something like this, but is usually modified. For example, it may be compressed, truncated, layered, converted from stereo to mono, or bit crushed to save space. These changes can be considered transformative, 
In copyright law, a transformative use adds new expression, meaning, or message to the original material, potentially placing it outside the bounds of copyright infringement. Potentially. Another important consideration is... Number three, sales impact. These modified compressed samples typically don't serve as direct substitutes for their high quality originals. This sound is just not the same as this sound. Reducing the risk of impacting the sales of the original sound sources. Basically, if it's not affecting the manufacturer's bottom line, they are most likely not interested. Before we move on, gotta shout out today's sponsor. Just kidding, I'm not sponsored. However, I would greatly appreciate if you joined me over on Patreon to support the channel. You can have custom music made for you in almost any style. For example, you might want to hear Megalovania in the style of Super Mario 64, or Silent Hill in the style of Metroid Prime, whatever you want. You can also get a full sound font or contact library built from the ground up just for you. Number four, ownership of game assets. Okay, so we covered transformative use. If these samples are modified, well, then that means they become part of the game's assets, meaning the rights belong to the game developer or maybe the composer. This would, in turn, indicate ownership of the rights to the respective sound font, right? Wrong! It's me, sound font guy of the future, and I've come back to make a very important correction. The ownership of these sounds remains solely with the manufacturer, Roland, Korg, Casio, Spectrasonics, or whichever company created these sounds is still the owner of them. In fact, it could be argued that these game developers and composers broke copyright by copying these sounds and kind of distributing them. But also maybe not. Keep in mind, the copyright landscape around these things has changed dramatically since those days. Copyright laws change, technical limitations are exceeded, the internet muddies the waters, and things that used to be okay stop being okay. Anyway, back to the video. But don't panic yet, because we still have to talk about Number 5. Widespread use and lack of legal action Despite this gray area, no legal action has been taken against the widespread use of ripped sound fonts. Not to beat a dead horse, but the most notable example here is, of course, Toby Fox with Undertale, which used video game sound fonts and led to him being hired as a guest composer for Smash Ultimate. Yeah, ever heard of it? As well as Pokemon Sword and Shield. And we all know how jealously Nintendo guards its intellectual property. So if Nintendo is tolerant of it, it stands to reason that others would be as well. Wrong. Before we get to the answer, it's time for a pop quiz. Can you guess the sound fonts? You'll only have a few seconds each, so make sure you're ready. Okay, here we go. The answer was Mario Kart 64. And the answer is Final Fantasy IX.
the answer is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So, how'd you do? Tell me your score out of three in the comments and tell the truth. The big question, are video game sound fonts legal? Well, the fact that these sounds are often transformed and potentially owned by game developers adds to this gray area. Basically, it's unclear who actually holds the rights to these sounds. Wrong! Is it the source rompler or sample CD? The composer who modified the sound? The game company that owns the IP? While there hasn't been any legal action so far, it's important to be cautious. I can't in good conscience say that it's safe. Unless maybe you own the original sample CD or rompler, or a license to use them. If you decide to use a sound font ripped from a game, you are technically taking a risk. Though it seems to be an incredibly small one, especially if you're just doing it for fun as a hobby. However, yeah, you thought we were done, but we're not. If you are genuinely uncomfortable using video game sound fonts for fear of running afoul of some company's copyright sharks, there is still hope. And it's me. One of my favorite pastimes is to create sound fonts and contact libraries inspired by classic games, but without actually using any assets from those games. I use a combination of my own live recorded instruments, software effects, and public domain samples to create my very own virtual instruments, all of which are 100% free to use without any fear of copyright infringement. As I mentioned, you can request a specific instrument be made via Patreon, and once an instrument is made, it is free and open to anyone and everyone who wants to use it. That's it. That's the video. Thank you for watching.